Hello, Luke. Welcome to lesson 91. So today we're going to be talking about uniform motion problems again, only this time we'll be dealing with problems that have unequal distances. So we've been talking a lot in previous lessons about uh, story problems that deal with uh, distance equals rate times time, right? That kind of that golden formula, distance equals rate times time. And we've uh, dealt with problems where the distances were equal. So maybe we had two people that left the same starting point and they traveled to a second, uh, end, uh, well, I should say an ending point, but they both began at the same starting point and then they both ended at the same ending point. Either that or, you know, one started at the end point and went to the start point and the other one started at the, you know, the beginning point and went to the end point. Uh, but either way, it was problems that had the same distance for both parties, right? And then we also dealt with problems where we had a, a certain distance for, let's say, you know, the first person or ship or plane or whatever it was, we'll call it A. And then we had a second distance, which was either longer or shorter for distance B, all right? And then what we did is we said, okay, the distance combined their combined distance was some number, maybe it was 300 uh, miles or, or something like this. So this is where we had, you know, distance one plus distance two equals some number, in this case, 300 miles, all right? Here, this first problem again was distance one is equal to distance two, all right? So those are the two kinds of problems that we've dealt with up to this point. Now, today we're actually going to talk about a third kind of a problem here, and that is where we have unequal distances. All right, so that's where we have a beginning point, and maybe the distance one is from here to here, okay? And that's going to be some number. We'll say, you know, we'll just call it x for right now. All right, well, actually, no, we'll call it, we'll call it distance one, distance sub one, all right? And then we've also got a distance two, a distance sub two for the second party. Only this one is not going to be equal to the first one. Maybe it's maybe it's longer than the first one. All right, we're going to call this distance two. Okay, and so you can see here that they have the same beginning point, but they're different lengths. And it's not like the second scenario over here. This is the first scenario. This is the second. It's not like the second scenario where we we know the total distance. All right. Well, they just tell us, you know, that the distances are different and then they might add something in there. They might say that, you know, the distance uh, for distance number two, you know, at this location, you know, where, where number one ended this to the end of the distance for number two might be 200 miles or, or something like this. OK, so they might give us a tidbit of information about someone's distance in the problem, but they generally don't tell you that, oh, distance one plus distance two is going to equal some number. They won't tell you, tell us this. And they certainly won't tell you that distance one is equal to distance two. This again would be the first scenario and the second scenario that we see over here. Um, so this case, it's a little bit different. What we're doing here in this third one is generally we're kind of saying, well, distance one is equal to distance to maybe plus or minus some other um, distance. We'll just call it D. All right. So that's kind of this third scenario where you have distance one and it's equal to distance two plus plus this 200 miles over here. That's what this would be in this case. It'd be distance one is equal to distance. Um, well, in this case, it'd actually be the opposite there. It'd be distance two is equal to distance one plus 200 miles. All right. But you get the general picture. So it's not like the other two scenarios that we've learned. So let's just try a problem like this and see how you do. Um, once we kind of understand, you know, the different scenarios we can have, it kind of helps us in building these problems and then solving for them. All right, so let's take the first one. Eight, at 8 p.m., Achilles left camp and headed south at 20 kilometers per hour. At 10 p.m., so right away notice the times are different. That's got to be important. Uh, Petroclos headed south from the same camp. Now, if Petroclos was 50 kilometers ahead, 
by 3 o'clock a.m., what was his speed? All right, so pretty complicated, but let's give it a try here. Let's just start, as always, by drawing a picture. All right, so here's, here's camp. That's the camp line. And this is where Achilles begins. And he leaves camp, and he heads south. And I guess I'm kind of showing this as heading west, or east, excuse me. Uh, but that's all right. We'll just pretend this is south. All right. Uh, so he heads south, and he's going at 20 miles per hour. Now, we might call this um, A. We'll call it distance of A for Achilles. Okay, so the distance A starts at camp, goes to here, and he's going 20 kilometers per hour. So that might be even something we could throw over here while we're at it. The rate of Achilles is 20. All right. At 10 p.m., Patroclus headed south from the same camp. So we'll call this distance D, or excuse me, distance P. All right. And what do they tell us about that? They say if, if Patroclus was 50 kilometers ahead by 3 o'clock a.m., so he passes Achilles. So he goes past Achilles all the way over here, 50 kilometers ahead, let's say. And that's where he stops. All right. So this is this is Patroclus. I guess it'd be Patroclus. Patroclus uh, is, uh, would be his distance. Patroclus' distance. Okay. So we have DA and PD. Or P. What am I doing here? Sorry. DP. D sub A and D sub P. Let's get our variables straight here. All right. Okay. So there's our picture. That's kind of what's going on. Now, one thing we might add to this, because they told us that Pat or Patroclos was 50 kilometers ahead by three o'clock AM. So here's kind of where he would be, you know, the same as Achilles. So from this point to the end points right here, what's that distance? 50, right? Because he's 50 miles ahead. Or not miles, kilometers. He's 50 kilometers ahead. So this is 50 kilometers, right? From this blue line to the end would be 50. So that's probably an important piece of information there. All right. So they want to know speed. So there, we have our picture drawn. Now we can kind of um, set up our, our equations. Now I kind of threw this one over here. I guess I didn't need to do that right away. Um, it's just as I was reading it, it just was there, obviously, so I just threw it over. Uh, but in general, we kind of want to start with that distance formula. That's kind of the key formulas here, the formula. So what do we know about the distance in this case? Well, we know that the distance of Achilles is going to be equal to what? What would you say? There's a couple different ways you could approach this. You could say the distance of Achilles is equal to the distance of, of Patroclos minus 50. Now, be careful. Notice how I did this. I subtracted the 50. Now, why did I subtract the 50? Well, because I'm trying to make these two distances equal. So how could I make them equal? Well, the distance of Achilles is smaller than the dist distance of Patroclos. So I need to make Patroclos is smaller so that it's equal to Achilles. Because remember, I'm trying to make them equal here. So the distance of Achilles is um, all of, you might say, all of Patroclos's except for 50. So we're going to subtract the 50. All right. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you, another way to think of it would have been to write this as the distance of Achilles plus 50. Or maybe even if I start with the distance of Patroclos, maybe begin with that. The distance of Patroclos's is the distance of Achilles, all of his distance, plus an additional 50. All right, so either one of these equations would be correct. It's just in a different form, right? I could get to the second equation here by simply subtracting 50 from both sides. And if I subtract 50 from both sides, what do I end up with? I end up with d sub p minus 50 is equal to d sub a. Well, that's exactly what I have over here, only in reverse. Okay? So again, either one of these equations is fine. Don't get uh, bent out of shape because you're not sure which one to use. Either one will produce an accurate result. All right, so take your pick. So since I wrote this first one down, we'll just go with that one. 
All right. Okay, so that is our distance equation. Now remember what we've been doing up to this point is we want to get rid of the d's. And we do that by remembering the golden formula, which is distance equals rate times time. So this distance right here, we could rewrite as the rate of Achilles times the time of Achilles equals, now this distance, we could write that as the, whoops, the rate of Patroclosis times the time of Patroclosis minus 50. All right, and then we can just get rid of this guy. We just rewrote it only with different variables. Okay, all right, so this is our key equation now. Um, now we need to gather information. So I already said that the rate of Achilles was 20. That's great. We're up to two equations. Now we have four unknowns, so we need four equations. Maybe I'll just write that one down here though. So we have the rate of Achilles. We know that's equal to 20. What else can we say here? We need two more equations. So let's look at what they have. Um, they don't tell us really anything about the rate of Patroclo, so that's the question. They want to know what was the speed, so we can't really find the R sub P. Um, so it's probably going to be time equations. Let's look at times. So at 8 p.m., <clears throat> Achilles left camp and headed south, all right? And then at 10 p.m., Patroclos headed south from the same camp, all right? Now, if that means, um, okay, so this is um, 8 p.m. he leaves, 10 p.m. he leaves, just to keep things straight, all right? And then if Patroclos was 50 kilometers ahead by 3 a.m., so when he's right here, this is 3 o'clock a.m., all right? What was his speed? So looking at this, and again, this actually would be also 3 o'clock a.m., right? Because this is at the same time, right? It's 3 a.m., and we're looking at the two, and we're going, oh, look at this. Patroclos is 50 kilometers ahead. All right, now, yeah, so that, hopefully you can see that. This is 3 a.m. for both of these guys, all right? Okay, so how long was Achilles um, traveling? Well, from 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. So now we have to do a little math here in our heads, maybe. How many hours is that from 8 p.m. to 3 a.m.? Well, that would be 8 to 12 would be four hours. And then from 12 to 3 is another three hours. So it's seven hours, hours total. So the, the, whoops, the time of Achilles is seven hours. Seven, right? And then what about the time of Paracla, um, uh, yeah, pa Patroclos? Patroclos. Uh, it's at uh, from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Again, if we do the math, we'll find out that that's five hours. So we have, uh, I'm running out of room. The time of Patroclos was, what did I say, five hours. There we go. So now we have four equations. The rest of this is simple. It's just doing what you've done so many times now. You're just substituting in all of the variables into these, this first equation and then solving. So I don't think I'm going to spend time today showing you how to do that. This should be very clear to you at this point. All right? It's the setup that's important here. So let's go to another problem. Why don't you actually try this one on your own? Pause the video, try it on your own, and then we'll do it together and see how you did. <coughs> All right, so it says, Rachel has a 15 kilometer head start on Charlene. How long will it take Charlene to catch Rachel if Rachel tra travels at 70 kilometers per hour and Charlene travels at 100 kilometers per hour? So certainly Charlene is going to catch her because she's traveling much faster. The question is, how long will it take? All right, so let's, let's again start with a, a picture of the problem. So it says that Rachel has a 15 kilometer head start. So that means if Rachel starts here and, and she's going this direction, okay? We'll call this the, the distance of Rachel, all right? Um, what about uh, Charlene, all right? <clears throat> Where is Charlene? Well, if Rachel has a 15 kilometer head start, well, then that means Charlene has to start 15 kilometers further back. You might think of it that way. So Charlene has to be way back here. She gave Rachel a 15 kilometer head start. This is gonna be like, you know, the 15 kilometer head start. And she's gonna begin here, and she's going this direction. And at some point, 
Charlene is going to catch uh, Rachel. All right, so this would be the distance of Charlene, d sub c. All right, and hopefully you see how I did that with the, the head start. <clears throat> All right, so now let's see what we know here. Um, uh, da, 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 let's see. Well, let's let's start with our distance problem, I guess. We'll go right to that this time. So we know that the distance of Charlene, I guess I'll say, her distance, which again is from here all the way to here, it's going to equal all of the distance of Rachel, right? The whole distance that Rachel has traveled, Charlene will have traveled at that point too, once she finally catches her, plus an additional 15 kilometers. Remember, this is 15 kilometers over here because this is a 15 kilometer head start. All right, so the distance of Charlene is going to equal all of Rachel's distance plus an additional 15 kilometers. Okay, now again, we want to get rid of the Ds here by using our, our, our wonderful uh, equation. So this becomes the rate of Charlene times the time of Charlene equals the rate of Rachel times the time of Rachel plus 15. All right, then we can get rid of this. All right, so there is our key equation right there. Now we need to get our supporting equations so that we can solve this. And we need four equations total. So right now we have one. All right, so now we go back to the problem and look for anything else we can pull out. All right, so uh, blah, 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 blah. how long will it take? Charlene Crutch, yes, yes, yes. Rachel travels at 70 kilometers per hour. That's important. So the rate of Rachel is 70 kilometers per hour. They give that to us. All right, Charlene travels at 100 kilometers per hour. So isn't that nice? They give that to us too. So the rate of Charlene is 100. All right, so now that's that's three equations. We still need to get another equation out of this. Now we've just kind of figured out both of the rates. It's probably a time equation that we need here. All right, so let's see what we got. Um, so if we go back and read the problem, they don't say anything specific about time, do they? We don't see anything in here that says, you know, the time of one is such and such or whatever. So we need to kind of uh, kind of work on this ourselves and, and try to see what's being implied. And if you think about it, if Rachel has a, you know, 15 kilometer head start and she runs away and at the same time, Charlene starts just 15 kilometers behind, that means they're both running th at the same time, right? So it's, you know, when they finally, when Charlene catches Rachel, they'll both have, have been running the same amount of time. They both started at the same time. It's just Rachel started a little bit further up. All right, so their times are equal, right? So that's the part that's being implied here. They don't say it specifically, but you have to read into the problem and understand what's going on in the problem to see that the time of Rachel is equal to the time of Charlene. They're both running the same amount of time. And that's our fourth equation. So once we have those four equations down, we're right back to our just substitution here. This one should be really easy. We're just substituting into this first equation and then solving. And I will let you do that on your own. All right? Very good. All right, let's try another one. So go ahead and pause the video on this one. See if you can get the setup correct. And then we'll do it together. All right, so Harry and Janet jog around a circular track that is 210 meters long. Janet's rate is 230 meters per in minute, while Harry's rate is only 200 meters per minute. And how many minutes will Janet be a full lap ahead? All right, so we have to kind of understand what's going on here. We have a circular track, so it's maybe kind of an oval like this. Okay, and they're running around the track. Okay, maybe this is their starting point right here. All right, so this is the the start. Okay, so what's happening? Uh, we have a Harry, we have a Janet. They jog around the circular track, which is 210 meters long. So that's interesting. This whole track is 210 meters long. All right. Uh, Janet's rate is 230 meters per minute. Um, you know what? Let's just... Might as well just throw that off to the side. Uh, we'll call it the rate of J for Janet. 
The rate of Janet is 230. Harry's rate, we'll call that H sub R, is 200. All right. And they want to know how many minutes will Janet, in how many minutes will Janet be a full lap ahead? Oh, so we really have to think about this now. A full lap ahead. So they're not just racing once around this track. They're continuing to race around and around and around and around, right? So you might be tempted at first to say, oh, well, their distance is 210 meters because that's the length of the track, right? No, wrong, because they're running that same track over and over and over again. If they run it twice, they've run 420 meters. They run it three times, well, now it's even more. It's another additional 210 meters. Okay, so we don't really know how long this track is going to be for them because they're just running around and around. Okay, so uh, what, do we, what do we know? We know that when they finally do catch each other, okay, or not so much when they catch each other, but when they get to where we want them to be. So we want them to be... Um, um, Janet, there we are. We want it to be so that Janet is a full lap ahead. Well, what does a full lap ahead mean? A full lap ahead means that she is completely one complete circle ahead of, of, ahead of Harry. All right. So that means she starts her, let's say her fifth time around the track and Harry is only starting his fourth time around the track. So really they're both in this position right here. They're back at the start position, but it's just Harry is maybe on his fourth trip, and now, you know, uh, Janet's on her fifth trip. So she's exactly one trip ahead of him. All right. So what does that mean? Well, we could say that the distance of Harry, okay, is going to be equal to the distance of Janet, right? But we could say minus 210 meters. Now, hopefully you can see how that makes sense. And we could do this another way. We could say the distance of Janet is equal to the distance of Harry plus an additional 210. Maybe that's an easier way to understand it. All this is saying is that the distance of Janet, where she is, and the dis is equal to the distance of Harry. They are equal, except that Harry has to still go another 210. So that means that um, Janet's is all of Harry's plus an additional 210 uh, kilometers or meters. Okay, make sure that makes sense to you. This is the same thing. It's just looking at it from Harry's perspective. From Harry's perspective, his, his uh, distance is equal to Janet's distance, except you have to take 210 meters away from Janet to make them equal because she's one full lap ahead and a lap is 210 meters. Okay, so hopefully you see that. That's going to be the hardest part to this whole problem is just getting one of these two equations and it doesn't matter which one you get, whichever one just seems to kind of come into your head first uh, or make sense to you, use that one. But they have to be one of these two. These are the only two that are going to work. They're the only two that make sense given the problem. All right. Okay. So we'll just select the first one here. <clears throat> After that, we have to just, you know, get rid of our distances here. So this becomes the rate of, of Harry times the time of Harry is equal to the rate of Janet times the time of Janet minus 210. Right. So there's our, our first, we can get rid of this, our first equation. And then we've already got two more over here. That we just kind of jotted down as we were reading the problem. The rate of Janet was 230. The rate of Harry was 200. So we still need one more. So again, we have both rates. So it's going to be a time issue here. So what can we say about time? Well, let's see. Um, their time. Well, they start at the same time, right? It's like it's just like the last problem. They started at the same time, and they're still running. It's not like one stopped running or one started running at a different time. They both started at the same time, and they've been running this whole time the race has been going on. And so their times are the same. So the time of Harry is equal to the time of Janet. Okay? All right. And then once we have it to this point, the rest is easy. We just need to substitute in and ultimately 
find how many minutes, uh, in how many minutes will Janet be a full lap ahead? Which is essentially, you know, um, what time, uh, how, how long have they been running? So we're looking for their time, which is equivalent. So once you found the time of Harry, you already know the time of Janet. So that's the key one right here that you're looking for. All right. Okay, very good. And I think that probably is all that we need to get through today. So if you can get through these these problems, I don't think I, no, I didn't have any more. Um, and I just took these again, straight from your textbook. Um, I use the same ones as their lessons, their lesson for today. Uh, but if you're able to understand these, uh, if you're able to get these setup um, equations written out, you're in good shape. If not, just really make sure that you understand how I got to these equations, especially this first one. That's huge. The rest kind of fall into place. This is the hardest one. So really pay attention to that. Make sure you understand it. If you don't, maybe go back, try these again until you can get them pretty comfortable. All right. Okay, so we will stop here today and uh, good luck. I will talk to you tomorrow.